Welcome to Notebook, a program of interest to the St. Lucie County community that features information about St. Lucie County schools. Guests include school district and community leaders with focus on children in our community. Welcome to another edition of Notebook. We are glad to have you here today. We have a special show with two different segments and lots of great information to share with you today. And this show in particular shares with you from community officials, school district personnel, and other organizations from around the Treasure Coast. And for our first guest, we have someone who's been with us in the past. He's no stranger to Notebook, and we'd like to welcome Mr. Mike Ketchpaul, who is part of the Young Eagles program. And this is a very exciting program. We're always eager to share a couple times a year about the events that are coming up. So Mike is going to be sharing with us about the Young Eagles program and what opportunities are just in store or just around the corner here very shortly um, about giving your child or student or grandchild an opportunity to sit in the pilot seat. So let's find out a little bit more about Young Eagles. And thanks for being with us, Mike. Oh, it's and a pleasure. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Always great to have you back. And I, as we were sitting down, we were saying you're no stranger to the studio. So thanks for being with us. Um, we have some viewers that may not be familiar with the Young Eagles. So share with us just a little bit about what the Young Eagles program actually is. Well, basically, it's a program that uh, EAA National set up um, in 1992. Um, it's just to give the uh, young people an opportunity to go fly in a, a general aviation aircraft. And along with that uh, flight, there's a, a little bit of a ground school that they go through to learn uh, safety around airplanes and how airplanes work and uh, a little bit of uh, information on what uh, they could gain out of the program in later years once they, they get a uh, idea that they want aviation in their in their career. path right yeah. in their career and how would someone get involved with um, the young eagles what would be the steps that they would do uh, what they have to do is uh, of course their parents have to accompany them uh, they can go online and pre-register or they can call me directly uh, we run the program uh, twice a year in the fall and in the spring and uh, once they get signed up, they uh, just show up at the airport and we put them through the uh, program and take them flying. Now, are, do they actually get to sit in on a simulator type of situation? How does that all work? We do have a simulator and if we have time, we'll let them uh, go through the simulator also. That's part of the ground school program. Right. And this is at St. Lucie Airport, is yes. that correct? Mm -hmm. And. Um, for those people who may not be familiar with that area, could you just kind of direct them a little bit about how to get to the airport? Okay, the main part of the airport is on the south side over uh, where the uh, tower is and the Tiki restaurant and the administration. Uh, we're on the opposite side of the field. We're on the northeast side of the field. So it's uh, off of 25th Street, you just take uh, 3rd Avenue, Industrial Avenue, and that brings us right to uh, our uh, facility. Okay. Very good. And then what kind of airplanes do the kids get to actually fly in? I know there's a little bit of mixture. It just kind of depends on what pilots are available. But tell us a little bit about the airplanes and the um, experience there. Yeah, they're all general aviation aircraft and uh, they have to be certified and inspected. Uh, the pilots have to be uh, licensed and uh, they have to have their medical up to date. And their airplane has to be uh, inspected also a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, the type of aircraft we use are Piper, Cessna, Grumman, and those are the main ones. Okay, and are those like a two-seater type plane? How how big of a plane are those generally? Most of them are four-seater. Four-seater, okay. And uh, they'll be 150 to 180 horsepower. Uh, and um, again, uh, they're all inspected and certified. Right. Now, when the kids go up into the plane, because as a parent, I would love to know this, when they're up in uh, taking their first flight, what might be the path that they get to see while they're up in the air? Uh, depending on the wind and the weather. Yeah. Uh, we like to take them south uh, just to fly them over to the city a little bit and down towards Port St. Lucie, where some of the kids come up from. Right. And then uh, out to the uh, river. Uh, so they can see um, a little bit of the ocean and the river and, and overlook the Fort Pierce area. So it's usually about a 25-minute flight yeah, 20, on, on the average, minutes. Mm -hmm. depending on the weather. Now, if for some reason um, we're going to talk a little bit about your event that's coming up on March 25th, and let's say for some reason there would be a weather issue, um, 
what will happen um, in that case if there's a weather delay or something like that? Will there be an additional day that will be scheduled, or how will that how will that happen? Yeah, we'll uh, make it again for the next weekend. Okay. So you've always got already got that on the calendar ready to go oh, yeah. just in case. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, um, March 25th is your day that's mm -hmm. coming up. And um, can you just walk us through the day that um, a parent might expect and maybe share a little bit about the age range, what um, age of students are um, allowed to be a part of this program, and, but also kind of walk us through what the day is going to look like and what parents could expect. Okay, the ages are from uh, 8 to 17, and uh, once they get to the airport, uh, we'll direct them uh, for registration. We'll have a registration uh, table set up uh, with all the information av available to the parents and the uh, kids. Then we'll start them through the ground schools. We call them ground schools. And again, that, uh, we'll take them through uh, safety information, uh, how airplanes fly, uh, what they can expect, how the airport works, and then we'll introduce them to the pilot. And then the pilot will take them around his aircraft and show them the finer points of the airplane and some more safety information. And do they get to be kind of part of that safety check that I know mm -hmm. pilots do each time, you know, before they get ready to fly? Are the kids part of that as well? Yeah, we'll do an abbreviated, uh, what we call a walk around. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to point out what we look for when we pre-inspect the airplane for a flight. And uh, just let them see what we're looking for and looking at. Okay. And then for the specific, um, the specific day on the 25th, um, what is the parent's role in this particular school? Uh, they can uh, join the, the uh, kids through the ground school. And then uh, while the kids are up flying, they can uh, go to our clubhouse, which we have and uh, either uh, sit in the clubhouse or they can, uh, most of them will stand outside and look for the airplane yeah. that they're flying. And so yeah. <laughs> They always want to be a part of that, which yeah. is always good. Now, is there a time um, for this particular event? When, what time does it actually start and end? We'll start at 8 o'clock, and then we have a cutoff time at 12. But if we have uh, an abundance of kids, we'll keep going until we're finished. Okay. Very good. And you said on your last event you actually had about 32 kids yes. that were part of that. Mm -hmm. And many of our schools are going to get a chance to have some of those flyers at the school locations. I know you mentioned that you were going to be dropping some of your flyers off to the various schools. And yes, I've already done that too, uh, for the most of the schools. And uh, in another week or so, I'll, I'll do it once again just to make sure that uh, they didn't run out. or Just another flyby, yeah. which is always good. <laughs> A little um, aerospace little uh, sentence there. Um, you had mentioned also that um, there's a summer program, and this is kind of the next level up. And many of the students that are part of our aerospace uh, program at Fort Pierce Central, often many of them are part of this program. Um, sometimes I, I don't know that many of our community people are even aware that there's an aerospace program with Emory Riddle at Fort Pierce Central, but our students are very much a part of the Young Eagles programs. Share with us what the, the summer program actually takes the students through to that next level and what they can expect. Yeah, the next level is an advanced level. Uh, what we do is uh, it's a whole summer program, so it's, uh, it's a big commitment for the uh, sure. young people to do that. But uh, we teach them the whole pilot program. And uh, at the end of uh, the summer, they'll be ready to take their written FAA exam if they wish to do that. And do they actually have to have um, hours logged already prior to taking that exam? How does that all work? Well, uh, after the uh, initial flight, the Young Eagle flight, uh, they're registered to go online to take the same class, and, and it's free. And it also allows them to learn more about aviation through the EAA uh, website. Right. Okay. So it all kind of leads up to the uh, the summer program. Okay, and can you share with us what the website is in case one of our viewers wants to hop hop on there and log in? Share with our the, yeah the our uh, uh, website here is uh, uh, www. dot dot org. Okay, and is there a phone number also that you could possibly share that if parents didn't have access to a computer, they'd be able to contact someone? Yeah, they can contact me uh, directly at 772-766-6957. Okay, and just be we've got a couple more minutes, and I know um, 
before we started the show, you had also mentioned the opportunity for a couple of students to, to go to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Say that 10 times. Um, and what what the opportunity is for a couple of the students to be a part of this, it's it's an amazing program. And I'm anxious for you to just take a couple minutes and share with us about um, the opportunities that students have to participate in that. Okay, uh, the Oshkosh event is a, it's a national event. It's a week long air show a symposium a gathering of anybody that likes anything in aviation. Um, what we do for uh, our uh, summer school students, um, the top two students in that class, uh, we'll send them to Oshkosh. Uh, we take care of um, the transportation uh, to and from and uh, their uh, encampment up there. And then how are they chosen to participate? Is, is it um, the score on their test? How, how does that come about? That's the score on their test. So the, the top two students are chosen and, and everything and is paid for. And enthusiasm. <laughs> you got to have that. Exactly. Oh, we know that's a really exciting experience for the kids and knowing um, that they have a chance to be a part of something to that level is, is quite a great experience. And uh, Generally, do the parents go along with them? How does that work? Uh, no, they don't. Okay. Uh, the encampment up there is just for the kids. Just for the kids. And it's all, uh, everybody in, uh, oh, even in our association, we go through a youth protection program. Okay. Uh, so we know how to handle kids and so say, on. And everybody you, is, yeah, you know that that's going to be a question that parents yeah. generally will, will ask that. And then do you actually participate in that? Um, event as well in Oshkosh. Do you get a chance no, to do that? No, I don't go up with the, no, with the kids. No, don't get a chance to do no. that one. Yeah, so maybe that's in the future. That's in the you future, never, definitely. <laughs> you never know. Well, if you would share your website one more time and then also share your phone number just so um, if people can just get that information one more time and if parents have questions, grandparents have questions, um, they can get a lot of the information through the website and also through calling you, so sure. which is wonderful. And we appreciate all that you do for the kids and just giving this experience and providing this experience um, like no other. You know, to get a child in the cockpit and really feel that experience of flying is, is amazing, especially the first time you get to do it. So, but if you would share the website and the phone number one more time, that would be great before we close. Okay, uh, the website is uh, www.908.aaa chapter.org and the phone number is 772-766-6957. Okay. And we really want to encourage you, remember the, the event date is March 25th and it's at the St. Lucie and Treasure Coast Airport. They're changing the name yeah, on us. Just yeah, that. just change the name. Um, so we really want to encourage you to, if you have a child, a grandchild, student, just someone you know, just to share the information about the opportunity to become a Young Eagle and to get a chance to fly in a Cessna and be a, the pilot for the day. Uh, we want to encourage you to check out that website or give Mike a, a phone call and he can answer the questions that you have. We look forward to seeing you back. We're going to be back in just a few minutes to share with our friends from St. Lucie Public Schools. We'll see you in just a few minutes. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning. Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Hello and welcome back to the second segment of Notebook and we are very excited to have two of my very good friends and I have such a privilege of working with them. We have Kate Ems who is our social studies and history specialist for the school district and next to her we have Mr. Paul Reef, who is our science specialist for the St. Lucie Public Schools and thank you both for being here. Thank it's you for having us. So before we get started you know I always like to have people share about themselves and kind of how you came to the positions that you're in currently. So just give us a little bit of background. How did you become a teacher, decide to be um, a history teacher, and then what brought you to this current position that you're in now? I have always enjoyed school and I always had some great teacher role models. So going to school, going to school on Monday was always fun for me. Mm -hmm. So I always 
knew that I was going to be in education in some way. And when I got to college, I had to make a decision as to which path I wanted to take, and history was the one that I went down, and I'm glad that I went down there. Yeah. So I've been in our district now close to 10 years. I taught at Dan McCarty for six years, taught at St. Lucie West K-8 for a year, and then joined the curriculum team now three years ago. Which we are so glad you did. <laughs> we always have a great time working together. And Paul, how about you? Give us a little bit of your background. Yours is a little different than Kate's because it's, education is a second career for you. Yes, ma'am. After spending three and a half decades in the apparel business, I was forced into early retirement. And somehow, miraculously, I wound up at Westgate, fifth grade, moved to sixth grade, moved to eighth grade, and then I was offered the position at the district. And here we are. And here we are. <laughs> And we have a great time working together so yes, we as do. part of the we curriculum do. team. It's a wonderful group of individuals really who are extremely is. supportive of it one really another. Is. And the two of you have been extremely busy over this last couple of months and especially since we came back from the uh, Christmas break. Mm -hmm. um, we've had multiple events that the two of you have coordinated and just first of all thanks for all that you do because th these are huge events that are um, made available to our students and they are, are amazing and it's something that you wish every person in the community would get a chance to be a part of these at the Kite Center um, at IRSC to see what our kids are doing and um, boy I'll tell you some of the subject matter and projects these kids have created are amazing it really it every year it gets better and better and just um, the knowledge that they um, share you know and just know their projects so well um, tell us a little bit about how um, how the history, let's start with the history fair because yeah. um, we say history fair but it's actually, we were talking about this before we started, it's actually history day, it's kind of been rebranded mm -hmm. and um, you're also over Project Citizen and those are two very different um, events and really curriculum mm -hmm. per se. So share with us a little bit about the difference between the two and then we'll go back and talk just a little bit specifically about the projects. Okay. Um, History Fair, History Day as we now call it, is what we're used to seeing with our social studies projects. It's our 6th, 8th, 10th, and 11th graders, um, though we do offer it up to 7th and 12th if they would like to participate. And they choose a topic based on the annual theme and they research a topic in history. So this year's theme was taking a stand in history. So anything that they felt connected to, they could research and present based around that theme. Um, we look in historical context, so at least a decade ago, we want to see the historical impact um, through many years, not just something that happened recently. That's opposed to our seventh grade project for Project Citizen. Those are current events. Those are current issues in our community that they work together as a class to try to find solutions for those problems. They research the levels of government that are involved. They look at the different public policy that is needed to fix those problems and ultimately create an action plan. They look at the advantages of everything, the disadvantages, and really get into what's going around in their own neighborhoods. Right, and when they were, I know when we went from table to table, just hearing the different things that they chose, they really have to understand public policy and really apply it, not just know about it, mm -hmm. you know, how does this all work together, which was amazing. And there were different ways that the kids, going back to History Fair, there were different ways that the kids could actually present their project. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, for a History Day, we have five different categories in how they present their material. They can create a display board, which is your traditional three-sided board, where they display pictures and, and um, text and things like that. Uh, they can create a website, they can create their own documentary, a performance that they have written, their own script and act out, or they can do a traditional research paper. So based on their talents and based on the best way to present their information will be how they determine how they want to present their, their information and which category they they choose. And they are very creative. I got a chance to sit on, on some of the performances and mm -hmm. the, the the way that they created their script and their dialogue was it was amazing it really is it really is so let's let's talk let's shift a little bit mm -hmm. real quick from history fair to science fair because 
both of these events have hundreds of students who participate. Um, and I know you guys just re recently had your awards night, so um, hopefully you can share a little bit about our winners here in a, in a couple minutes. But share with us about um, Science Fair and the process that students have to go through to actually be a part of the event that we have at the Kite Center. Okay. A little bit of background knowledge. As the world's population is going to increase by 2 billion people in the next 30 years, it's going to be scientists who are going to afford fresh water, clean air, place to live, and naturally enough food. So we're going to have to, this current generation of students that are in school are the ones who are going to be responsible to make the world a better place to live. And so through science, that's how it's going to happen. I sort of sound like Donald Trump. <laughs> to digress a little bit. But we start with an elementary school science fair where students are encouraged from K through 5 to do a science fair project. Then they go to the middle school and high school science fair where it's school-based. And every school is afforded the opportunity to have a school-based science fair and then send 15 project to the St. Lucie County Regional Science Fair that's held at the Kite Center. From there, we pick 14 students who go to the state, the state of Florida Science Fair in Lakeland, and two students that go to International, which will be held in Los Angeles this year. Which is very exciting, and you already know those two individuals. Yes. Can you yes. share with us? Um, the two young ladies that two were young chosen ladies for international? Two young ladies from both students at LPA, Hannah Sharif, who did a project on plants, and Shreya Reddy, who did a project on microbiology. Both of them looking how to make our environment better for the future, in they, order for st sustainability right. for the future. And they were amazing presenting their information and um, it, it's just amazing that these two girls are in high school. You know, they, they speak as college or beyond. You know, they're beyond their years and their knowledge of their, their projects and have done a ph phenomenal job. And since Science Fair has that process of going, you know, from regional to state to international, how does that work for History Fair and Project Citizen? For History Fair, uh, we will be sending our first and second place students in each category um, to Tallahassee. They're invited to go to the state fair. Uh, that'll be May 7th through 9th. And then those that are invited at that level will go to the national fair um, in Washington, D.C. area over the summer to compete against other states. Um, for Project Citizen, we have two rounds of the state competition. We actually are having our students that are advancing now uh, improve on their boards, improve their research, and then we'll be sending their research binder and their presentation board to Tallahassee. It will do, be displayed in the Capitol building for lawmakers and other imp um, important people in Tallahassee to look at and those that are invited to the next level will compete against others in the state in May. So they'll be able to join their board and their binder again and go before a panel of judges to defend their projects. So at that point we send to the national competition. Last year it was in California and our one of our projects actually went to the national competition. The board and the binder goes and they scored at the highest level possible for the very first time. How about that? It's St. Lucie County Public Schools. Yes. That's very good. And then, do you already know who is going to be at um, the state level? Can you share with us a few of the projects? I know there's a lot yes. of names to remember because you have a lot of kids going. Um, but just maybe hit upon a few of the first place projects and what they covered. For Project Citizen, uh, we're sending three projects. So from Samuel Gaines Academy, we have a project that was on uh, the relationship between our local police force and our community, which they did a lot of research on that, and of course, hits close to home, which sure. is part of Project Citizen, is helping your community. So they're gonna be sending their project up. We have a project from Manatee Academy on motorcycle safety, and seeing if we could work with our city planning department to help provide motorcycle lanes in some of our areas in town. And then we have a project from Lincoln Park Academy who did their research on maternity leave. They all had mothers who were 
had children and they wanted to make sure that they were taken care of when they were out taking care of their newborns. Yeah. So, and then for History Day, we have quite a few projects that are invited to go, but we saw some big themes this year under our umbrella of taking a stand mm -hmm. in history. We saw a lot on the Holocaust. We saw a lot on the Revolutionary War. And then what was nice this year was we saw some local people. We saw local issues coming back, some Fort Pierce history, some Florida history, which is really good oh, yeah. for our kids to make connections to their community. Right. And not just the big names, those unsung heroes, those little guys that you know we don't know a lot about, but we had students really make connections even to their own personal history that they had no idea about until they started doing research. Right, very good. And then your awards night was just um, last week, mm -hmm. and I know that was a great event. This was the first year that you guys had combined your awards night, which was kind of fun. And you always have a guest, um, a guest singer. Yes. Uh, John Bell always is part of your event, which is always great to have that connection with IRSC. And um, just the team camaraderie that you guys have really built with IRSC has just been amazing and we always appreciate their support um, of letting us use the facility and really um, they work closely with you with the professors mm -hmm. and I understand that some of them are going to be coming and helping prep the students to go to the next level for you is that correct yes on March 21st we're going to have a practice night for our history day participants and we're going to have a chance for them to showcase their research again and get feedback. And we've extended the invitation to the professors at IRSC so that we can get some high-level information yeah, yeah, to there, help them along go. the way. And do you do something similar to that for the science fair kids as well? Yes, Kate and I prepared a video, uh, how to do a presentation at a judging experience and we gave them background knowledge and then I meet with each of our 14 participants and we go through their project and what they need to know and how they, it's actually, it's really selling themselves. The state rubric, 25% of the state rubric is the ability to explain their project and take ownership of it. And we, I've met with them uh, today and I will meet with them again next week, and we're going to prepare each individually for the judging process. And watching the two of you as you prepare for these events, just the the amount of um, background and preparation that goes into this in preparing the judges alone to see what these kids are actually judged upon. Um, they're their project, yes, their knowledge of it, their presentation. Um, there's so many different things that are looked at as part of that rubric. To Talk a little bit about that, Paul. Well, I'm, the one thing I want to say is that it was amazing as we watched several students who competed both in History Day yeah. and Science Fair walk across the stage right. to get honored. It's really all about the students and the effort that they put into it and the help of both the history fair and science fair coordinators at the school site. We really couldn't do it without them because they really make it happen. You know, we prepare the regional fair and the but they make it happen every day at their school site. Okay. And they should be commended and honored for that effort. Because yeah. without them, it couldn't happen. Right, and their enthusiasm when you're there for, the, for all three events, it's the kids are excited to be a part of it. They're excited about the projects, you know, and excited about what they've learned, you know, through the process. And it's just a great event for, you know, the community to, to to get a chance to see it. Thank you for joining us on this latest notebook and we appreciate you being with us and we encourage you to go out and learn more about what students in St. Lucie Public Schools are doing because they truly are incredible at what they do. And thanks again for all you do and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.